All right, welcome to Flutter 101. And basically, I'm going to teach you how to build a simple widget. So what you can do is to solve this problem, you can just type in my app since we are missing a my app widget. And then and there you have it. You have your my app widget and now it's working. So have you guys wondered how these people actually can create such a simple widget so, so fast? Actually, it's not that simple, but it is simpler than you think. So there is this thing called snippets and it's found in Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code, sadly, maybe inside your IDE it has, but this video is for people who use Visual Studio Code. This is what you can expect when you can create your own Flutter widgets. So for example, I want to create my own sized box, but I need just the height parameters. So I have a snippet that's called sized height, and it gives me the height properties, and I'm just going to add in a simple height of number 10. So this is just a very simple example that you are going to learn. So let's get started. And what snippets are is basically, it is something that when you type in a certain word, you can see that it actually creates a whole line of code without you actually typing the whole line of block of code. And then you can just put in the necessary data or whatsoever inside the code that you have created or the snippet that you have used. So how are we going to configure our snippets? So let's go to your Visual Studio code. And then we're going to open up our command by pressing F1. And then we're going to type in snippets. So there is this option menu that says preferences configure user snippets. So we're going to use this and then it will show you the different languages that you can create snippets in. So we're going to create our snippets in Dart. Press enter and then it will automatically create a dart.json file for us to create the snippets under our user folder. So there is an example over here. So let's uncomment this whole block of code. And then inside this JSON, we have this object which represents a snippet. And the object name will be like the title of the snippet. And inside this example, it says print to console. So in order for us to activate a snippet, what we can do is we can type in the word log. So that's what prefix is. This is just like a trigger for us to activate this snippet. Make sure to save your file. And then let's go to our main.dart. And then let's go to any Dart file. So the Dart snippet is only available inside any Dart file. And then we are going to type in the word log. And then you could see that our snippet has been shown over here. So if you were to press tab, you could see that the console log snippet has been activated. And then if you were to look very closely, you could see there is also another line over here. So this is where we're going to put in a string, for example, ASDF. And then once we are done, then if we were to press tab, it will go to the next line. So how does it do this? Well, inside the JSON file, you could see under our body over here, inside the list, there is this console log statement, which is actually printed out once we use this print to console snippet. And then you could see this dollar sign over here. So if you have coded in Dart before, you could see that this is a string interpolation, meaning that a variable will be passed in and then it will convert to a value that you have added. So the value that it has added for us is actually empty. And why is it number one? So number one represents where our cursor will actually land first. So our cursor will land in between these two apostrophe. And then once it's done, once you press tab, it will go to the next line, which is then represented as the dollar sign number two. That's why if you were to, for example, do this log over here, and then you could see over here, this is where it starts number one. So you type in a string, hello. And then if you were to press the tab, then it will go to the number two position, which is the next line. And then lastly, the description over here. This is the one. So if you were to type in log again, you could see the description over here that has been shown inside our Visual Studio code. So this allow us for any users to see, oh, what this snippet does. So this snippet allows us to log output to console. Now we're going to do something similar. So console log, if you guys have known, it is a print statement essentially for JavaScript. So we're going to do it for Dart. So we're going to replace this console log into print. 
So I think a lot of us, including myself, and I guess this is like a very rookie mistake is that if you want to debug, so for example, I have a height variable from the media query size or the screen size. What usually you will do is you probably have a breakpoint. So if you don't know what's a breakpoint, it is basically just list red dot and it basically stops the code and you are able to see the value of the variables as such. So this is what I want the end result to be. So what I can do is I can just copy this print height is height, go to dark JSON, and then I can replace this as such. And then lastly, I don't need this uh, second or empty line at the bottom. So instead of height, what we can do is we can put in the same variable. So we can put in the money sign and put the number one. So now instead of log, we're going to type in print var. And this basically says that we're going to print the variable. And lastly, we are just going to make this description change from log output to console to print variable output to console. So now let's save this and then let's remove this print statement. And then we're going to type in print var or print v because IntelliSense is able to guess what snippet you're going to use. And then it will just suggest, oh, you're going to do print var. And you can see the description that we have added, print variable output to console, press tab. You can see that there's tool cursor that has been added for us. And then we can type in the variable that we want to print out, which is basically the height. And then once you're done, you can see there is a second line just after the line over here. So if you press tab, then it will go to this line. That is the default line after you have used the snippet. So there is one cool thing that I want to show you. So if you were to scroll all the way down inside the documentation, for the snippet Visual Studio Code, there is this thing called variables. So the snippet has its own variables, right? So you can have like selected text or even the file name that you're currently in. But I'm going to make use of this thing called clipboard. So what clipboard is, is contents of your clipboard. So let's go back to our VS Code and inside our Dart JSON, Instead of us manually typing because I think we have better things to do, we can just replace this number one into the word clipboard and then make sure the word clipboard is in all caps. So once you save this, now we can retry this print statement again, but this time we're going to highlight this height and copy this and then we're going to type the print var snippet. So you can type in print V and then if you were to press tab, you could see that the magic happens. So the contents of your clipboard contains height. And then once you just type in the print var snippet, it will add in the copied contents inside this print statement. That's pretty cool, right? So now you can just do a lot of this print statement by just copying and then type in the word print var for this print statement snippet. So you can check out the different variables that you are able to use. For example, you can have current year, current date and current hour for logging purposes, right? So lastly, we can actually also add in a widget. So earlier in this video, I have added in a widget that I commonly use. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to duplicate this whole thing and then I'm going to press alternate shift down arrow key. And then instead of printing to console, I'm going to have this snippet that's going to help me a lot, which is called add size box with height only. So we're going to create a prefix that is called sized height. Sometimes you want to put SH for short, but for me, I like it to make it readable. So since it's a widget, what I can do is I can type in the word sized box. And then I'm going to put the property height or the params height. And then I'm going to use the string interpolation one and then put a comma over here. What I usually do for the size box is that if you were to go to main.dart, right? And then the problem is that if I were to add a size box just right above the center widget over here, and then I would type in size box. Dart and the Flutter team has created IntelliSense for us. So for example, we have sized box over here. And then if you were to put in the word height, there is this trailing comma over here. And then I will have to manually put the end comma as well. And then if I were to put value, for example, 12, and if I were to save this, 
this trailing comma will auto format it as such, which is a waste of space, right? So usually I will have to remove this. Why does this size box helps? Because if you were to do a lot of UI, it's usually in a column. And then if you want to space things out, you probably use a lot of sized box with height or container with height, doesn't really matter. So I love to use size box with height. You can see how many size box height I have. So having this snippet will really help me increase in my productivity. So now with the size box with height, I'm going to add in a description that says I'm going to add a size box widget. So this snippet will add a size box widget with height only. Let's save this. Let's go back to main.dart and then I'm going to type in sized height or sized H. Then you could see that there is this user snippet and the description add size box widget with height only and you could see the outcome over here. So now if I were to click on this, you could see that it only adds the height and then I'm going to add in 10. And then I just put a trailing comma as well outside of the widget, not inside. And then I save this. Oh, this is such a time helper. So this is just a simple example of what you can do with snippets inside Visual Studio Code. But what you can do is you, you can also assign key bindings to your snippets. So if you really use a lot of sized box, for example, you can actually, you know, put it inside your key bindings.json file, and then you can put in the key, for example, command kh for me to insert a sized box. So you don't have to type in as well. So this is a lot of things that can really help you in terms of your productivity in your Flutter development. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down your list of snippets that you have inside your personal Visual Studio Code settings. Then you can share it at the bottom. I'll probably share mine in the description. I only have a few. I don't really use a lot, but I think I'm going to do it right now. So stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.